hope this is working. Hey. Well, hopefully everyone can see me. So we got a lot of people, a lot of people here already. Um, a commercial on time, hilarious. We're gonna be uh, doing more on the blues. This pick is really getting worn out. I need to get a different pick. Well, this one's better. <laughs> Is my guitar really loud? Is it okay? Compared to my voice, can you can you hear both? Okay, thank you, Bonnie. Bonnie. Um, so everybody's here, right? You can hear me okay? I see I've got meter here. Um, okay. Awesome. So who do we have here? Let's see. We've got, just get you in here and hook. Yes, uh, hey, Baka Cat is here. Hook and Pepper and Kimberly. Uh, let's see, Dennis, Diane. I don't wanna miss anybody here. Peter, welcome again. AJ is here. Um, Jim. Did I already see Bonnie? Jim and Bonnie always come together. And let's see. Uh, Keith, Zen, you're on time, Zen. Yes, you are. Afternoon where you guys are. Warren, good afternoon. That's a new name. Warren Coleman. I have a friend named Brad Coleman. Probably no relation. Uh, let's see. Ed is here. And Paul Becker, buenos dias, amigo. Let's see. Uh, Diane. She's just, just, she's just here for the stories. <laughs> so, wow, we got a lot of people on right now. This is great. Okay, um, who else? Everybody's just saying hi to each other over here in the live chat. Jim Horst, I see you. Bruce, good to see you. Um, my uh, my Bode Psaltery was, was uh, shipped on Monday. I'm supposed to get it next this monday it's taking a while from indiana it seems kind of long but that's all right uh good i'm glad it sounds good here um i've got i've got some things hey walter so i've got some things we're, we're gonna do the blues i've got um we're gonna continue on the blues basics can you hear that let me see what's where it's Okay, so a bit more. All right, let me, I can turn that up. I don't know if this is going direct or through the mic. That's the thing I don't know. When I look at the software, it's both meters are lighting up, but I'm pretty sure I can add another input source. I just have to organize it. So I'm getting there. Pants confirmed. <laughs> hey, Ryan. Yeah, and again, I think the track may be coming through. And I just created a very simple blues basically um this this progression here in um at, at 80 beats per minute like we were doing with the with the um uh, with the metronome but like i said i always prefer to play with drums or something than a metronome it's just not as interesting for me um so let me see i can um go back to this let me see how the guitar level is <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
So how's the guitar level on that? So many windows to go. <laughs> I've got Logic open. I got the OBS open. I got I got Chrome open for the for that. Uh, more guitar. Okay, okay. I can turn the guitar up. That's easy to do. Um, before it was too loud, so I was a little. I didn't want to get. That's a little bit better, probably. I can turn this off now, but we're because we're going to talk. Um, let's see. Okay, I'm going to go here, and I have to. Oh, I have to go here, then here. I have to organize these windows. It's crazy. Never too loud for Diane. <laughs> Diane's a rocker. Um, yeah, and also, oh, are you hearing it straight from the guitar into the mic, or are you hearing it from like the, with gain and like an amp? Um, uh, let's see, let me go back here. I can turn up the overall cause yesterday I had a volume, a volume problem it was too loud for it. Like, and I could tell when I did it, I was like, Oh man, that may be too loud. So, all right. So, you know, there's unfortunately these, I have to remember all these settings so we don't have to do this sound check. You guys are my engineers and I'm getting a lot of input here. <laughs> so, um, but what we want to do is uh, just kind of review the blues thing, and um, I'm gonna probably pick up my guitar. I am gonna change. I'm gonna add a rule. Um, I may not use the, may not take advantage of it today. But Gary, if Gary's there, yeah, Gary's here. We have a, the rule. Someone suggested this, and I, I, I'm gonna relent because I think it actually deserves a sip. So, anytime I say there's not gonna be a quiz on this or no quiz at the end of the week, you can take a sip. Because to me, that's celebratory. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Now, I'm going to do this wrong. See, I did it wrong. I went, like, the, tilting the wrong way. I'm like, dang it. I'm not used to having the image the right way. And um, so what I want to do is uh, we can take a sip because I'm going to change guitars. So we have several rules of the drinking game. Um, if I uh, touch my face, because we're not supposed to, in the coronavirus era, touch our faces, which, whatever. Um, <laughs> but uh, if I refer to myself in the third person, and I really only do that for your benefit, or to try to catch you off guard to make sure you're paying attention. Um, if I use air quotes, and I have to see, see, <laughs> turn around, I can't do this. If I do air quotes, or I could go like this. No, that won't work. <laughs> I can't do that. Wait, there we go. It's like I put this over my face like that, and now I can do air quotes. Dang, I am just so turned around on this. Um, so, uh, but I'm. Uh, if I change guitars, we take a sip. Um, if I. Oh, I'm wearing the same shirt two days in a row. I totally am. <laughs> My goodness, I, I knew there was something I forgot. Dang it. I need a checklist. I don't have a checklist. Actually, I have 10 of these shirts. <laughs> no, I'm lying. I am a lazy sack. I actually went for a long walk, too. How many of you are wearing the same shirt you wore yesterday? That's what I want to know. I don't get to, I don't get to make that uh, judgment. Okay, I'm pretty much in tune. So what I can do is I can uh, play the... Um, uh, I can play this jam track and we can play along with that as well. So I really, I really do think that one thing you should do is try to, like I said yesterday, is to try to play this progression here, the 12 bar blues in E, the simple version, not the simplest one, but the simple one. Um, even if you have to slow it down to 60 to 50 to 40, whatever, um, uh, you uh, try to do it a thousand times. Like a thousand times perfect, not in a row. <laughs> Not in a row, but you could do it one time and know, okay, the goal is to get this so ingrained in your head that you don't ever frustrate, frustrate anyone who's trying to jam along with you. And so that you have it so ingrained in your head that when you're playing the blues, and this is pretty typical blues, I um, mean, you know, we can learn other versions, like we can learn a minor version, we can learn an eight bar version, all sorts of different things. 
Um, I can I can pull up some songs. We're you know we may even learn Stormy Monday at some point, which is a little bit more complex. Uh, that would require a lot of bar chords. Um, but you will have it so ingrained in your head that you'll be able to solo. And like I said, the really soloing in the blues is so much about setting up the chord change. And speaking of chord changes, if you're having trouble, um, and do I need more light? Let me be a little more light on this side, like that. That's better. Yeah. Um, if uh, <laughs> what shirt <laughs> and jammies are better. Let's see. Bruce, you're wearing the same shirt. Is everybody saying they're wearing the same shirt or they're wearing a different shirt? Same sweatpants, but changed my shirt. Yeah, Peter. Two showers today. Wow. Oh, well, <laughs> Dennis, okay. Yeah, but it's also the end of your day where you are. Um, okay, Gary's got, yeah, Gary's got, uh, oh, that's right. If I leave the room. If I mention that I uh, worked on Apex Ledge, I did all the guitars on Apex Ledge, you can take a sip. Uh, but that doesn't count. Let's see. Yeah, if I if I forget my tuning, <laughs> so I pick up a guitar and it's in drop D and I don't realize it and I start playing like it's in standard, like an idiot. <laughs> and it, you know, like, the like an idiot part is kind of that we couldn't drink to or we'd all be under the table or it's living in the bathroom because we'd be peeing so much. Um, Oh, no, man, I'm sorry about it. So you had to repair some stuff. I've had to do that. I've been knee-deep in all sorts of things. Um, so what, um, but speaking of, like I said, speaking of changing chords, um, and hopefully you can see these okay. Um, what we can do is just go E7 to A7 and back and forth like that. Okay, because you want to be able to get to that point where you don't have to go, here's the blues. Hold on a second. Hold on. Okay, you don't want to be that guy uh, or gal. Um, and so what you want to do is if you're really having trouble changing chords, then just practice changing chords. Don't, do, don't practice the blues. Practice changing chords. Because that's also going to frustrate, um, frustrate someone you're trying to jam with. So you got to get that. So we, you can play the A7 and you go to the B7. So all of the, basically, you need to be able to go, be able to, go to and from any of these chords. I think we, we go E to A, and we go A to E. We go, uh, we go B to A, but we never go A to B. But that doesn't matter. If you can go to B to A, you can go A to B. Uh, we have E to B, but we, and we do go B to E. Uh, so if you look at uh, bar 8 to bar 9 is E to B, and bar 12 to the top is B to E. Okay? That's all right, Bob. Yes, and I know I'm wearing the same shirt as yesterday. You know, I got up at I got up at 145. No, one four, yeah, something like that. 140 this morning. Wide awake. Like I never wake up at, at the middle of the night and not want to go back to sleep. I was like, so I watched. So I prepared some 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 stuff for for the next few lessons. Um, and so hopefully I did. <laughs> I, I wasn't too sleepy when I did it. You'll see some. You'll see one of the things today. Um, and then I, I just, I, w I didn't go back to bed until like 5.15, so I kind of got up late today, and that's probably why I totally forgot to change shirts, and I went for a long walk, got my coffee, so I do have that going for me, um, my little advertisement for Starbucks, and, um, Hey Max, how's it going? Oh, Quail Guitar, Quail Studio Guitar, very cool. You're new. I mean, I haven't. You haven't. At least you haven't commented in here before. How many people do we have? Alan Z's on. Hey Alan, good to see you again, man. Holy crud, we got 44 people. <laughs> you guys are awesome. It's crazy. This is um, this is fun. This is fun. I, I mean, it's gonna be a bummer when <laughs> when coronavirus is over. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just say that? <laughs> 43. Okay. So, um, so if you want, you know, just go A, I mean, E to A, E7 to A7, back and forth. Try to get that so it's seamless. Okay, and then you can work on the E7 to B7, which is gonna be a little harder, but then your second finger doesn't leave. So you can leave your second finger there. And you notice I'm kind of bringing my thumb around. 
that's not good technique, uh, but I don't have a problem making a good sound with a B7. And this allows me to deaden the bottom string so I can be lazy about my strumming because guitar players are lazy. Okay. And then uh, you go B7 to A7. And that one's not too hard because you can just move these two fingers together. Okay. Now, we're going to jam. We're going to play along. It's going to be 80. I can change the tempo if I want to make it slower, but I'm going to keep it at 80. I'm just going to go ahead and hit play on this. Unfortunately, I won't have a count off. Um, but uh, we're just going to jam the rhythm on this 12 bar blues along with the jam track. I got some drums, I got some a bass, and I put a little Rhodes on the downbeats. Very, very, very simple. Um, and here's the deal: you don't have to play four quarter notes with me. You can just play a whole note, three, three, four, and then go to the next chord. Two, three, four, one. Maybe hit downbeats. Three, four, meaning beat one. Two. Now get ready for the A7. So if you are a little slow changing. You can always, you can still play, you can still jam with us, um, but what you always want to do is you want to err on uh, leaving the previous chord too soon, and then getting to the next chord too late. Okay, so here's my, here's what I'm saying. So, and again, I, I'm assuming I've got beginners in the room. So, um, <laughs> in the Zoom. <laughs> uh, so uh, we go E7, two, three, four. See, I moved right to the A7. See, I started moving at like beat three. One, two, three, four, two, three, four. Okay, it's better than this. One, two, three, four, three, four. You know, it's better than being late. You, it's better to get there, your hand there early. Don't hit early. Don't hit with your right hand early, but left hand, it's better to get there early than, than late. Um, ultimately, and keep in mind, every guitar player the best guitar player in the world still has to has a gap between two chords. You can't not. It's un, unlike piano. With piano, you play a chord, you hit the pedal, and it rings out, and you can get your hands over the next chord. And at the same time, you put your hands down on the piano, you let the your foot up off the pedal, so it's instantaneous. Okay. So piano players are nothing but a bunch of cheaters. <laughs> My friend Michiko, she says even a cat can play the piano. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's not lazy, it's economical, exactly. <laughs> okay, so then, two, three, four, A7. Okay, so let me just go ahead and put the jam track in there, because I'm going to go too fast otherwise. Okay, this is going <laughs> to... Shoot. Uh, dang it, I wish I could do a... I, see, I don't want to add a bar, because then it would be 13 bars. I want you to really hear this as it is, but I'm... Yeah, I can't. Unless I go into record mode, I don't want to record. So, let, so it's just going to start right on a one... Two, two. Okay, so one, two, three, E. I'll catch up here in a second. Seven four now. Awesome, thanks guys. E seven coming up on B seven. One two B seven four. You can practice soloing if you want. A7. E7. Okay, now B7. And if you can only hit the downbeats, I'll do it with you right now. E7, B7. After that. 3, 4, B7. So just hit what we call footballs. 
the A7. Let the band do the work for you. Again, E. Now A7 next. Three, four, two, three, four. Hey, Rick. E7, four, two, three, four. I don't think I said hi to Kathy. Hi, Kathy. This is the Kathy Bell Blues right here. E7. B7. It's a lot easier than it was just playing with a click for me. Okay, again, I'll do whole notes again. These are called whole notes. Four. They're, they're worth four beats. Three, four. One, two, three, four. We also call them footballs or diamonds. No quiz on that. Shoot. Wait, how do I get a sip? Oh, shoot. Ah. I'm a pro. <laughs> B7. Gary, we're going to talk about that. There's a lot of ways you can play over this. But basically, <laughs> E minor pentatonic is what we're going to use today. Or E blues. But you have to make accommodations for the B chord. Some of the notes will work. E7. Sorry, one more time. Um, B7, whole notes. And then I'm going to go back to chopping wood. That's another musician term. Chopping wood is this, I'll show you. This is chopping wood. Three, four. It'd be more common to do it with a bar chord. It's called chopping wood. Oh, uh, this is 80 B B BPM, 8-0. And I got a little swing to it, so it's like almost like a 12-8 kind of thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 11. Okay, now I gotta go over here and stop the band. <laughs> pretty cool, though. It's working. I think that's working pretty good, to be honest. All right. Hey, gear, gear, gear view mirror. That's a great handle. Oh my gosh. That's a great handle, man. I love that. Yeah, and, and you really wouldn't play an E major in E blues. Um, uh, because in uh, E blues, has you know, generally you're going to have an E7 chord, and E major would have a D natural. You're good, I mean, D-sharp. So you you know, you might need that D-sharp for the B7 chord. We're going to talk about that more in, in the days to come. Um, today, we're going to um, we're gonna move forward. And I, I don't remember what I put here. Okay, so I know, remember, I've got, so I've got these scene changes, which is dope. Oh, look. Look what's coming. Woo. Okay, so this is what we're going to work on. Somebody predicted it yesterday. I forget who it was. It, was it Hook? Um... And this is a this is a like kind of a uh, what you could call a skeleton or a starting place. Um, and uh, the notes in here, I didn't. Um, well, I can write them here. The notes, and I have it written on something else, but I don't want to go there because it's it's a piece of it's, it has other information on it. I don't want to confuse you. Uh, the notes in an E minor pentatonic are E, G, A, B, and D. And um, and then it keeps repeating. So it's E. G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D, E, G, A, B, D. You can keep going. Uh, it's only five notes. That's why it's called a pentatonic scale. A blues scale, uh, E blues would have an extra note in there. So, I um, mean, we're going we're gonna to learn that one tomorrow. What we want to do now is just kind of mess around with this one. Um, and it wouldn't hurt for you to know the notes you're playing. I mean, I think you already know half of the scale if you know the names of the strings. Eat at Denny's, get bad eggs, E-A-D-G-B-E. -E. Um, and what we were going to do is we're going to actually mess around with just playing one note and sitting on it and seeing what it sounds like over the change. Um, I may go ahead and go to electric, I think, because I think you'll be able to hear it better with the track. Um, 
I was watching a video yesterday a little bit on my phone, and I, I know that the phone is really small, so the resolution always looks pretty good. <laughs> Someone who's who's watching this on a 55 inch TV? Was that was that hook that was like he, he said laptop 55 inch TV? Because I knew what you meant, but I'm like, man, laptop with a 55 inch screen that's got to that's got to like how, how you get up to go to the bathroom? <laughs> so, oh, where's oh Ben is here? Oh hey Ben, no, don't worry Ben, you're good. So the scale. Um, the scale is, it's weird to play a pentatonic scale with open strings because I'm always expecting to hit, you know, two, two notes per string, but it feels weird to play it open. But so many great blues songs um, use the open E pentatonic. If you're in the key of E, it's a great way because it just sounds so nasty. Those So you, you can really, gosh, I'm squeezing my pick way too tight. I don't know why I'm doing that. Um, but you can uh, you can start to, uh, you can get so many great tones and you got the, you got the open stuff, get those like Jimi Hendrix vibes going. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. But what, what I want to do is we just look at the notes here and we can even start, I really wanted to start on the top four strings. Um, we have, I mean, I'm sorry, the top two strings. So the second string open uh, right here is this note. <laughs> That doesn't do anything for you, does it? See, right there, look, right there. That note right there. <laughs> That's a B. Because it's a B string, right? So. Oh, no, 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 it's back. Um, so, got the B string, and then the next, the third fret is a D. Okay? And then the next string is E. And then the next note is a G. All right. So if I uh, go down, you can see. Uh, how do I want to do this? Oh man, I'm moving the wrong thing. I don't know if we need this. You guys can probably get that. Let's let's practice the pentatonic scale for a minute. Um, so play the bottom string open, and third fret with the third finger, the open A string. Second fret with the second finger, open D string, second fret with the second finger, open G string, second fret with the second finger, open B string, second fret, I'm uh, sorry, third fret of the second string, second finger, uh, sorry, open first string, and uh, third fret. Okay, then. Uh, backwards be third fret on the first string open third fret on the second string open second fret on the second string open second fret on the fourth string I said there's whatever so this is fourth string open second fret on the fifth string and then open third fret on the sixth string and open and you can practice little chunks like that so I went open on the bottom string, then third fret, open, second, and it's on the same string, open, and then back down to the third fret, and then open. So, you, yeah, you can make it... Um, but... I like the top two strings because uh, there's so many there's so many tasty notes in there. And then what I'm going to do is not tomorrow, probably the next day. I'm, we're gonna we're gonna do an exercise with just those two strings. We're gonna learn three different patterns on those two strings, and it's gonna change every time the chord changes. Okay, but for now, I just want and here's one little trick you can do uh, right away. Um, so the third fret here is a D on the second string. Okay. 
So that's the, that's the. I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, I am tired. I got about four hours sleep. <laughs> Sorry. Also, I'm trying to keep tabs on what's going on over here, see if there's any questions, but so far everybody's been pretty much focused on talking to each other. <laughs> So, um, but this D note here, you could slide up to the E, and you could hit the E string with it. So, now, one thing that um, you can uh, you can notice um, is that uh, let's see, I, let me uh, let me add a, an image here. Okay, uh, where are you, images? Image. No. Capture. Create new image. Where? Uh, oops. Cancel. Uh, browse. Okay. So, what was I going to grab for you? Yeah, I think I'd go, I will go ahead and, and grab this information now. I don't want to. I don't want to overwhelm you with information. Um, but basically, okay, we have three chords, E7, E7, A7, um, and B7, right? And the notes, and see, this is what I was doing last night when I couldn't sleep. Um, so you can see the E minor pentatonic has notes, it works you know, have, have no, notes in common with uh, the chords and also notes that are not, like that contradict. Um, for example, the G in the E minor pentatonic contradicts the G sharp in E7, but that's, that's um, the flat third, so it just ends up sounding like... A lot of times when we play that G there, we bend it to the G sharp. B.B. King would do that a lot. Uh, he would do that a lot. So uh, you don't have to bend it though, you can leave it there. Um, oftentimes when you're when you're going up, you're not really going to G sharp, you're going to the note that's in between G and G sharp. Remember I told you the story about um, George Martin trying to get John Lennon to sing the right note on, um, I think it was um, uh, Twist and Shout. And he was like, well, are you gonna sing? Let's see, Twist and Shout's in D, right? Um, I think it's in D. Are you singing an F or an F sharp? And John's like, I don't know. <laughs> he goes, well, sing an F. Uh, and he did, and it didn't sound right. And okay, well, try singing in F sharp, and he, it didn't sound right. And it was like, that's when George Martin realized there are notes in between notes. Uh, he was a classically trained musician. He really didn't ever think that way. And blues players have always thought that way. So, um, oh, dang, Kathy, still got the headache. Sorry about that. Good hairstyle. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. It's just, it's literally running my fingers through my hair with you know wet hands, and that's it. That's all I did. Not a lot of work here. Um, so the other thing, uh, like so, so, but even though the G sharp contradicts the G in the E minor pentatonic, look, you got in the E seven chord we have E, B, and D, and we have an E, B, and D in the E minor pentatonic. So you can see where so many of the notes, those notes right there, are all part of this chord. So that so that means okay, that's those notes are going to be really good. And pretty much any of the E minor pentatonic notes are going to work over the E7. Um, and then over the A7, we have the C, there is no C sharp in there, but we do have the A, E, and G in the A, E minor pentatonic. So again, the E minor pentatonic has three notes in it from the E7 chord and three notes in it from the A7 chord. But if you look at the B chord, we only have two notes. Um, and we have a con conflicting note, which is the D sharp. Um, and we... Playing the D over the B7 is the same as playing the G over the E7. That D natural blues thing to do. So the, that D note's going to be great. In fact, when you get to the B chord, what, you could go back and forth between the B and the D. Open B string and a D. But the note that might not work very well is the G. The note that sounds really good over the E is it's that, it's that flat third. And over the A7, it sounds great because it's a seventh, right? Mm -hmm. 
So, um, so basically, you've got you. We're gonna have to make maybe some accommodations or uh, simplify what you do over the B7 chord, which only happens two out of the twelve bars. Okay. Let me just play the. I'm gonna try to do something real simple here. Let me just play. Should I maybe grab the? Seems like it's a little dark because it's a rosewood fingerboard. How much battery do I have? Yeah, I'm good. Let's see if this gives me more light on my hands, if that helps. Is that better? It's blinding me though. But let me, okay, so now I gotta go back here, hit play. <laughs> Just insult your audience. That's how, that's the secret of music. there yet it's hard not to it's, it's hard not to go like up the neck or play notes that are, I'm not supposed to that aren't part of this lesson yet okay so the, oh, shoot I, I cannot <laughs> I'm trying to oh I'm just so turned around right there boom there's a scale this, oh my brain just went, oh. Kathy I'm so tired <laughs> you guys I'm making a complete fool of myself <sighs> oh my goodness um, and, and again, um, on this, you can, um, uh, uh, you can, um, uh, you can play, you can just play the chords if we're, pra if some of us are practicing our soloing, okay? Um, I just made that beat this morning, Ben. <laughs> so it's just a loop. It's the same 12 bars over and over again. So I just played in a bass line, uh, you know, with the keyboard and I played Rhodes and then. It's a, it's a, if you have logic, it's a software called Drummer that creates a drum groove. And I just made sure the drum groove was swinging. <laughs> yeah, squirrel. Seriously. Yeah, Bonnie, I think Bonnie sent me, I, I, I haven't checked my email yet, but I think Bonnie sent me some J, an image for, the, for a potential t-shirt. <laughs> I still got to get my daughter's. I, I, I should really have her, hers made first. Um, but we, maybe I can turn that into like some kind of certificate too. I could do like a, we could turn it into like a graduation certificate that you all get and frame on your wall. <laughs> that would be really pathetic. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. So, um, you know, this light's bugging me. I don't need that light right now. Look, I'm Iron Man. Iron Deficiency Man. Speaking of, I'm going to go lay out in the sun. It's warm here. I'm going to lay out in the sun for 15 minutes. They said 15 minutes, three times a week. And a, there was a study that came out in, out of Indonesia saying that people with a, that had an iron, or that had a vitamin D, D deficiency and got the COVID, I don't know, that 99% of them died or something like that. It's like crazy. And then people that had plenty of vitamin D didn't die or something, so. Uh, wonder how time will be if we got to day 90. I know, right? No, we're not. Gonna, we'll see. You know, I want to start my, you know, my new playlist that I was talking about. I'm trying to kind of formulate that. And then I'm trying to get work done during the day and get my 10,000 steps in and, you know, be a husband. And 
Yeah, I don't know. I think I'm not going to wear sunscreen. I think I want, I want to get, I'll, I'll just, it's just on the back mainly. I'm just going to get my back. It's 15 minutes. It's not that long. But, um, I, you know, I used to, I got burned bad as a kid. I got a story for, you know, <laughs> maybe I can, hey, Chris, cool free iPhone app called Quick Drum and lots of beats of jam. Oh, that's a great idea. Um, the other thing, and I'm, as I'm touching my face and we're all taking sips, Um, uh, another great one is, um, let's see, I, I have to turn down the, the, um, getting all sorts of text. Hold on a second. Uh, but it, it comes with the iPhone and a lot of people don't even know they have it. Um, uh, it's called music memos until you start playing music. So like, for example, I'll hit this. it started recording once I hit the music and then what it'll do is analyze oh you know what I wonder if I'll get a takedown notice for this blues or a, like a copyright infringement you think that would be really bad I mean since I just wrote this not wrote it but you know tracked it okay so that's enough so I hit stop and it basically analyzes it and you can of course there's already drums there Oh, it's still analyzing. But you can tap on it and create a chart, which you can't see because it's too bright. Oh, got to go this way. Gosh darn it. I'm so turned around with this camera. But see, it even creates a little chart, and you hit play, and it'll add drums. It even said it's in 6-8 because it heard a shuffle in there. See, it started recording once I hit the music. You hear me talk. <laughs> it recorded that too, obviously. Uh, but it's kind of music memos is kind of cool. It's you still have you still have voice memos on the on the iPhone, but music memos is is pretty pretty fun little tool for writing. I, I don't ever use the drums or the the baseline stuff that comes with it, but um, uh, yeah, that app is called uh, Music Memos, and it comes with your iPhone. If you update your iPhone, it's it's been on there for to be honest years. I had it on my phone a year before I even knew what what it was. Um, that what, you know that it was even there. <laughs> so, I, Apple does that. They'll put apps on your phone. And you're like, oh, what's Apple TV? I didn't know that. <laughs> what's that? You know, it's like I'm trying to sell you stuff. Um, DK music memos. Yep, that's what it's called. Um, it's actually it's great for songwriting. I use it for you know it. Really no different than voice memos. I don't use it any different than voice memos, but it will analyze the chords you're playing and tell you what they are. And sometimes they're right, sometimes they're not right. Uh, sometimes they're oversimplistic. Um, and then, like I said, it, it analyzes the rhythm. And if you're playing kind of in rhythm, you can add a drum beat to it and a bass line, and then you can export it that way too as an MP3. And you can export it right into iTunes or uh, your music uh, folder or whatever. And so that, in that regard, it's pretty cool. Okay, so um, let's let's do some more uh, practice on this. And again, the, the I didn't write a fingering on this pentatonic. No, dang it. This wait, what am I trying to point at? I can't do it. This this thing right here. <laughs> I don't think I'm ever gonna get this. I, I really don't. I just don't think my brain is capable of doing this. So this shape right here. Let's practice this a couple more times without a track. And then uh, maybe I'll, I'll let the track play and you, you can solo or something. Okay. Try and use this. And again, soloing is not, this is not soloing. Soloing is trying to say something. Soloing is having a conversation with your audience. That, this would be like going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, you know, uh, it would be like saying, saying the alphabet to your audience um, or reading the phone book or reading the words in a dictionary in alphabetical order. That would not be having a conversation. You wouldn't be saying anything. Just like, just like that, say, just playing a scale is not soloing. Um, and so what you want to do is you want to try to find things in there. Um, I, I, I mean, like I said before, I want to do this. Um, we can just take the E note. 
Um, and we got we got three of them, but really four. I'm going to show you four. Here's there's one. That one's a little low, but that, we'll count that as one. One. <laughs> and then two would be the second fret of the fourth string. So play that one. Two. <laughs> Gosh, I'm like two. So it's really important what I'm holding up on my hand right now. I should just I should I need to go back to this. I think that's better. Um, and then the other one is open E, but also I showed you this one, the, the fifth fret on the second string. Exactly, a filibuster. <laughs> yeah, this is a filibuster. <laughs> yeah, and nobody likes a filibuster. <laughs> nobody. So. So, oh, is DK taking off? Good to go to bed, DK. No worries, DK, get some good sleep, okay? You need it. Um, let's see. Remember, hit that like button. Uh, let's see. I still don't see any questions, do I? Kathy, am I missing anything? I see no. That's good. Okay. Everybody's paying attention. Um, and know, know that we're going to take this another step further tomorrow and another step further the next day. Um, but let's just, just pick an E, any of the E's, and I'm going to hit this jam track. And it will work. Solo using rhythm. Now over the B chord, it's not going to work very good, but stick with it because you just you're anticipating what's coming. See, it doesn't work there, but it works fine over the A, and of course it works great over the E. Over the B, it's a little weird. It's, a, it's the four. Over the E, it's the root, obviously E. Over A, it's the fifth. See A C sharp E back to E seven. Seven. Now, if you want, you can go to the open B string for the B if you want. Let's do that. So, go to the second string here. One, two, three. Not a tune, but. And then back to the B. Okay. Back, we go to the C. Let it ring for a minute. Let your solo breathe. Take a breath. Doesn't work over the B, but that's okay. It works over the A, works over the E. We go to the open D string. Whoa, that's flat. But it's all right, because you're getting back to the E. Okay, so you, I think it's really, 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 there's a, I, I said a couple really brilliant things. <laughs> it's okay. I said a couple really brilliant things. Okay, uh, one is, because uh, <laughs> I'm so flipping brilliant, but one of them is, is, you know, you're having a conversation. So don't just play the scale. Try to say something musically, okay? You can say something musically with one string. And so that was the second thing. The second thing is just play one note and sit on it, and then we're, we're gonna talk about, uh, I'm gonna give you parameters in a couple days uh, where we could go between four notes. You're gonna have four notes for the E chord, four notes for the A7 chord, four notes for the B7 chord. You'll have four different notes, all in the top two strings. And you're gonna, you're gonna try to create a conversation with that. Um, because it do, you don't need to be flashy, you don't need, blues especially, it's all, really, it's all about creating a mood. And so we were speaking using rhythm. So we were like a mono, you know, mo uh, a monotone person, a person that speaks with one voice and they sound like a robot, but they can't help themselves. And they talk like that. Um, and I've actually known a monotone. It's very rare, a real monotone. Um, but what that does is it, um, it makes you think about the space and the speed and the gaps and the and, th and then um, then you can worry about the other stuff later. You don't really need to worry about the scale yet. You really just want to, you know. So like, like I said, it's, you can even just do it. You can flip and do it with your lap and you're just slapping your lap. Hold on a second, let me, that sounded wrong. <laughs> yes. 
Okay, everyone, slap their lap. <laughs> just, I, I never put that this is this channel is for children. So. Now, let me do something interesting here. Let me do this. I'm going to go back to um, my logic. Um, turn, turn this off. I'm going to take the drummer because the drummer is a software. So I can... I can I can turn the turn the fills up. So he's going to do a lot of fills here. I'm making it. I'm turning the fills all the way up. So it's going to be a much busier drummer. Okay. But what that is that will do is that will give you some rhythmic ideas. So the drummer can kind of feed you. Walter's not here, is he? The drummer can kind of feed you some ideas. Oh shoot! I just left that window. So I'm going to hit it now. See, you already got it. It's a little bit busier than it was. It's still not really busy. It's pretty busy. <laughs> I don't know if I would hire that drummer the next week. <laughs> but you can see. You, and now it's going to do the same thing every time because it's a loop. So what, I, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm going to listen to him and I'm going to play off of him. So if he does a bum, dum, 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 then I'll do bump up in the next bar maybe. imitating his symbols and so literally and I had a friend uh, an engineer friend of mine uh, that would say you know um, he really liked like the band that he was I was he was uh, he was a live mixer and he really liked the band he loved how we had conversations with each other you know we were listening to each other we weren't all turned inwardly and again I've talked about this before it's really you're gonna get a lot more uh, you're going to grow really fast if you're playing with other musicians. I, I usually imply other guitar players, which is good because you can kind of share guitar stuff to each other and try to bring something every week to the to the jam where you're like, oh, look what I learned this week. Oh, let's try to incorporate that or whatever. Um, but the same thing, you don't have to jam with a guitar player. You can jam with a bass player or a piano player or a drummer uh, or a sax player or whatever. You just just jam. Um, like I say, you got a friend that plays the flute and they want to learn to work on soloing. Just just volunteer to play the blues form for an hour. Um, they could pull up a jam track, but why not? Both of you get an opportunity to play some music. Uh, but but really, you know, if I'm pl if I'm playing guitar and the drummer's like, and and I start, you know, like the drums are like, and then I go like, and I keep going. The drummer's gonna eventually go. And we're all going to end up in the same place together. He's listening to me. I'm listening to him. That whole thing. Bass player, like I said, a good bass player will set you up. I pretty much, the bass line I did on this was like E triad. Um, I was trying to telegraph the, the chords. B, I just went dun, 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 to, to, to kind of to kind of imply that the, here's the turnaround bar 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 12 and sometimes a bar 11 12 again are the turnaround bar that's when you hear things like right 
right. This bar, this is bar eleven. There's, there's the B chord. Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, where can I put this? You know what? I can just make these smaller. Okay. Which is this is so awesome that I can do this now. I just, I'm just, I keep apolog I keep getting the guitar behind the. It's better to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> like a thousand up votes. Oh, okay, we got we got questions here. All right, all right, all right. Sorry. Thank you so much, Kathy. Kathy Kathy never gets to actually pick up her guitar. So I've got a question from Gary from Na 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 and from Hook. Gary, where are you? Gary, 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 Gary. Okay. Oh, I see a question from Hook too. Oh, the software is just um, is Logic. I'm using Logic. It's an Apple. Uh, I, I don't know if Logic works on a PC, uh, but Logic is an unbelievably, it's probably the cheapest software in the world for how much work is done on it worldwide. Um, and so uh, it's 100 and, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, dang it, I grabbed the wrong thing. <laughs> it's just a comedy of errors over here. I just need to wear a clown, I need to get clown makeup. There we go, now I can drag this over. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> uh, let's see, uh, but, 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 but. <laughs> Diane, let's see, you guys are dying over here. I, I'm, I'm like, I wish I could see the chat more. I can see it, but I'm just not, I'm not concentrating on it. So, uh, um, so I still didn't get Gary's question though. Sorry. Um, but so yeah, it's $199 for logic and it's unbelievably packed with stuff. So if you have a Mac. It's a great software. You can do so much. You, I, I, I do this professionally, and I use maybe one percent of its capabilities. It's crazy, um, Gary. Uh, let's see, Gary, 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 Gary. Where is your question? Dang it! How far back was it? Was it maybe not as far back as I think it is? Oh, oh, this Gary. Sorry. In your scales on the screen, the D sharp sound is off on the B seven scale. Yeah, um, so the, the basically, the D, this is, these are not scales, these are the chord tones. Okay. Oh, you can't see that. So that where, where it says right there, um, E7, those are the notes in an E7 chord. A7, those are the notes in an A7 chord. These are not scales, these are chord tones. A seventh chord has four notes in it. A triad has three notes in it. Uh, as we all learned, just looking at this, E to G is a major third, G to sharp to B is a minor third, B to D is a minor third. That's a, a seventh chord. The A7, A to C sharp is a major third. C sharp to E is a minor third. And E to G is a minor third. We all learned this in chord theory. I did a whole series on chord theory. Uh, B7, it's B to D sharp is a major third. And B, D sharp uh, to F sharp is a minor third. And F sharp to A is a minor third. Don't worry, no quiz on this. However, all three of those chords are all major, minor, minor when we're talking about thirds. They're all the identical type of chord. N those each are in their own key. There's in any major key, and we discovered this too when we were doing the harmonization of the seventh chord. Remember the one chord and the four chord were major seventh chords. The two chord, the three chord, and the six chord were minor seventh chords. We only had one dominant seventh chord. The <laughs> Shoot, dang it, I can't do this. There we go. <laughs> this, this, it's, this is not because I'm tired. I could have had 10 hours sleep and I'm still gonna be doing this kind of crap because I just don't know what. So the, the, <laughs> these each of these chords are in the, E7 is the five chord in the key of A, A7 is the five chord in the key of D, and B7 is the five chord in the key of E. So these are all three different keys. Okay, if I were to play a mixolydian scale over each one of these, I would have to play in three different mixolydian scales. The E minor pentatonic is just kind of the the minimal uh, scale that will kind of work over all of those, and you can sell at least you know three notes in every one of the chords. Over the over the B7, uh, the, the E's not great because it's just above the D. Because remember the B7, it sounded like this, which sounds cool, but but in the blues context, that E just kind of, it, it sounded like it was rubbing against the chord. When we, when we sat, you know, the E was great over the E chord, remember? And then over the A. But when we got to the B chord, it was, it was rubbing against it. So that note doesn't work. The G doesn't really work. The A works fine because that's the seventh. You can see there's an A in the B7 chord. The B obviously works because that's the root. And the D is the one that's like, eh, if you push it a little bit, 
And we're going to work on, there's a, we're going to make a change in the scale to accommodate both the A7 and the B7, but we're not going to do that until the day after tomorrow because I don't want to go too fast. Again, usually the, I'm doing these lessons. For one thing, we're, we're doing ultimately an hour lesson. You know, in a half hour lesson, I might give you this much and then expect you to work on it for a week. So now I know we are all stuck at home, but that's, you know, anyway. So hopefully that kind of answers your question a little bit. Uh, down, 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 up. I'm not sure what you're referring to. No, 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 no. Um, except maybe right hand plane. Uh, but you can kind of play it any way you want. But yeah, oh, I see. Maybe like the... Or like... Down, down, up, down. Yeah, that up is the swing, kind of a swing eighth note. Okay. Playing the D note sounds better. Oh, it's... No, no. The D note sounds better. You don't want to play the D sharp, except maybe over the... The D sharp would work over the B. And, like, you know, like, like I can do this. Sorry, back to your question, Gary. Because like you, you kind of clarified or you went into greater detail further down. Uh, you know, I might use that over the B, and that's got a D sharp. That sounds really cool. Here's the B7. So I'm going to... Solidian pentatonic scale. We're not going to learn that one today, and maybe not ever. I don't know if we'll get to that one. We'll see. Okay, and then I had a, a hook had a question. Uh, hook, where's your question? Dang it. Oh, oh, you okay? I, I got that one. Okay, cool. <laughs> now I got to catch up. I'm way down here. No more questions. Okay, Tom needs a green screen. I know, right? I could probably do a green screen and put me in like Disneyland or something like that. Yeah, turnarounds are definitely. Like I said, I think, um, I, like I said, I'm not, I'm not claiming to be a blues guitar player. I, I, I can play at it. I've done, I do a lot for TV stuff, but it's, that's totally different because it's not, I'm not like carrying a blues band. That's a, that's a serious undertaking, and it's a lot harder than I thought it was. I was a snob and thought I could do it, and when I did one gig, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so much harder than I thought it was because I just didn't have an arsenal. I didn't have an arsenal, and, it, and part of the arsenal is, having great turnarounds. So uh, YouTube is is lousy with blues turnarounds. There's so many great guitar. RJ is a great teacher on the blues stuff. RJ Ronquillo. Uh, a good friend of mine, or a friend of mine, I don't want to say good friend because he lives in Nashville and I live here. I decided he'd be a good friend that far. But I love his channel and I love his gear reviews. And I, uh, he's a great guy. I love him. And um, he, uh, he's really good at the, at the blues stuff. Um, and, and he probably has some blue, he actually has some, uh, I think some lessons that you can buy and stuff too about slide. He's really into that. Uh, he also does the finger style blues things, which is really cool. Um, again, I'm, I'm just kind of trying to give you an intro to blues mainly because it's a great thing you can do to jam with others and get better. Um, and it's not hard to play the blues. It's hard to carry a blues band for three hours or to make a blues record and have it be, uh, something that anybody would want to listen to. Does that make sense? Are you taking off, Quail? God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Um, Tom, I'm not sure if anyone's asked, but what are your favorite style of guitar playing? You know, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really have a favorite. I just don't. I mean, I, I tend to like the ones I can't do very well, like bluegrass, rockabilly and flamenco um and i do feel like um i don't listen enough to music because i'm doing it so much during the day i kind of envy people that can just sit around i always had a friend that when he would get a new album he would put it down on the turntable and he would sit down in front of the speakers and just sit and listen to the album first side and then second side and he would just sit in the chair and listen and i just envied that um i couldn't just have music playing and not pick up a guitar i mean in the car i can obviously <laughs> <laughs> Although I have driven down the road, rolled down my window, had my neck sticking out and get practice guitar on the freeway. But that's only because I was sitting in traffic. <laughs> so um, the uh, but but it's, you know, like I, good flamenco guitar blows me away. Um, and I would love to get better at that. I do feel like one of the ways to get better at something or learn a style of music is to listen to a lot of it. And listen to it historically, like someone mentioned Robert Johnson yesterday. If you really want to get into blues, yeah, you should listen to Robert Johnson, because uh, that's what Eric Clapton did. That's where he got his ideas from initially. Um, and to keep in mind, Led Zeppelin ended up having to give their royalties away to uh, 
um, uh, you know, or not give their royalties away, but they stole some blues songs on their first record um, and didn't really, I, they just didn't know what they were doing. And um, so um, I need a Tesla. Um, I actually, that's probably, if I, if I get a, another car, I don't know if I'll ever get another car. I may just stop driving. My driver's, I can't, I can't get my driver's license because it's DMV's closed. Uh, I actually turned off the insurance on my car because we're going nowhere. So Beth has hers on, so we can go. Um, but I, uh, uh, my next car would definitely be a Tesla. And I would love to have an, I, actually, I would just love to have automatic, automatic cars. Everybody have one, you know, automatic cars so we can just chill out and go 60 miles an hour down surface streets. We can get rid of freeways that way. Um all together. So, uh, but yeah, but favorite, favorite style to play. Um, I mean, I really, I don't know. It's, it's really hard. I, 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 whatever I am playing at that moment, I try to express, I try to feel as much love for that style in that moment. Um, in fact, I've got to reply to a text. Um, sorry. Um, I saw a text and I got to reply to it. So from a client, And um, I just want to let them know I'm live streaming. Uh, saw your chart. Live streaming right now. Right. Okay. So that answers that. So yeah, I got I got a chart for um, no. <laughs> uh, oops, sorry. I want to let him. <laughs> then I'm not. You thought it was live streaming the chart. All right. So if I if I reply to a text, you you can take a sip because you got to kill the time. Uh, so let's see. Oh, Bob, what did Bob say? What did oh Bob? Let's see. For all Quail Studios teaches guitar online. Oh, nice. Awesome. Yes. Well, and I really do. I do think you know you should. Uh, if you want to get better faster too, I think take, taking private lessons, particularly in the studio, once everything starts to open back up, um, is a really good, I mean, I taught privately for 35 years. Um, it's a great way to kind of be motivated, especially when you're spending the money on lessons, be motivated to um, practice. But I can't tell you how many people spend a lot of money on lessons and didn't practice. It's, it doesn't, that doesn't necessarily seem to, and another, one, another thing that people do, oh, I'll buy like a, a $3,000 guitar and that'll motivate me and it, it doesn't seem to work. Um, so, you know, but I do think really, to be honest, I think jamming with others, one of the things that some studios, and I never did this because when I was a kid, I had to do it and I hated it, but doing recitals, that will make you practice, but it makes you practice out of fear, which isn't necessarily a bad motivator. I mean, for me, that's almost 100% my motivation for everything I've ever gotten good at was fear of making a fool of myself. Uh, apparently I, <laughs> I shouldn't fear that cause I do it all the time. I should be used to it. Um, but I, I do, I do feel like, uh, there's, um, uh, it's good to have a teacher. It's good to support your local guitar stores, all that kind of thing. And, um, uh, you, you know, the teacher can custom make the lesson to you. And if you want to learn specific songs, if that, if the teacher's willing to do that, not all teachers are willing to do that. A lot of teachers will take you through a program and make you stick with the program because either because it works or in some cases because the teacher doesn't want to, you know, doesn't want to work that hard to figure out songs and teach them to you. So it just depends. I never minded learning songs and because I always had students that were, you know, a lot of junior high and high school kids that the older I got, the, the more out of touch with current music I was. And so they were always hipping me to whatever was the latest thing. So it was actually really, really good for that. Um, so let's see, what, what are, what are people saying? Spending money on lessons definitely motivates me to practice. That's good, Kimberly. Um, but I'm not costing you a squat. 
you guys are getting this for free. <coughs> so, all right, let's see. Uh, yes, uh, Gary, everyone should have a supplemental vitamin D. Oh, really? Well, that's weird because that's I, I I run around eight hours a day naked in California. It seems it seems to. <laughs> Yes, the, the, the recital thing, I hated it when I was a kid. I just hated it. And when I started teaching at the store um, that I was taking lessons from, I think the year I started teaching, they stopped doing recitals. And I was so glad because I was really stressed out about... Uh, part of it was because I felt like I was... I mean, I was just a new... I was 18 years old and teaching... Not even... I was 17. And I was teaching guitar lessons at a store. And I'm like, am I really a guitar teacher? I mean, I'm just a kid. And then to be in front of everybody with your students and then have them underperform was I, that was kind of a big fear, like oh, that people are going to stop taking lessons from me. But actually, I don't remember ever having to be there as the teacher. I remember doing it as a student, but not as a teacher. Um, but yeah, like jumping out of a perfectly good airplane, exactly. Uh, spending money on a new guitar motivates me to learn. Okay, well, and see, and I. <laughs> The thing that motivates, but my, what I think is if you had a weekly time where you were going to get together with someone every Monday evening at 730 and jam for an hour, um, if that was something that you made a regular thing, I think you would go to that. Um, you might not you'd be like, oh, I'm not looking forward to it. Once you get there, you'd be like, oh, this is a lot of fun. And you also might be a little nervous about doing it because you, um, um, you might be um, concerned you're going to make a fool of yourself. So, I mean, anytime I've taken a gig that I didn't think I was necessarily prepared for, um, I, uh, you know, uh, I, I, you know, did a lot of work in preparation for. So, um, and then there's the, the problem when you don't do the work because you think you already know it and then you find out how unprepared you are. That's, <laughs> those are the bummer gigs. Um, carry me back to old Virginia. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay, so your story, yeah, your, the, the place you're taking lessons from is making you do, yep. Yeah, Kathy, I know, it's, it's crazy. Uh, <laughs> sorry, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, that's an image he doesn't need to me running around in California. Uh, yeah, my little sister, she saw, there was a book when we, at, at, uh, we were at our cottage in Michigan. We had a, uh, there were a lot of books, you know, for summer reading, and co the cousins and everybody, the aunts and uncles would bring books and leave them there. So we had a big bookshelf full of books so we could read on the beach. And there was one that was like, I don't know, probably some scandalous novel called They Both Were Naked. My little sister was like seven or something. She goes, they both were naked. <laughs> so I went, yep. Yeah. So anytime I see the word naked, I always think naked. Uh, Huey Lewis, is, if, this is, if this is an intro is pentatonic, my instructor had me learn that years ago. Interesting. Uh, so is... Um, Sir Sir Duke by um, I think Sir Duke the intro to Sir Duke is pentatonic by by Stevie Wonder, so that's a good one too. Uh, okay, uh, Kimberly said when I was stressing about our recital in December, someone told me remember everyone in the audience wants you to succeed. Succeed. You know what? That's exactly right. I never thought that. I always thought everyone in the audience wanted me to fail miserably so they could laugh at me. <laughs> So, so that may actually help me in the future, but uh, I play in front of people all the time. That's kind of why I like playing in church because it's a big church and there's cameras everywhere and it's broadcast and it kind of has dealt with all those fears, especially when I was leading worship. I mean, I had to deal with all those fears and I was pretty fearless at the end of that time. So, uh, but yeah, jams are, I think a really good motivation. Um, even, especially if it's even just one other guy, you know, one other player, um, it doesn't have to be a full band. You don't have to be super organized. Um, and the blues is a perfect thing. And you know what you can start to do is do blues in every key, too. If you get if you get bored in the key E, go to F and go to F sharp, go to G. Try to play blues in every key, and uh, and start having fun that way too. Uh, let's see. Um, do, you do have to work with people who want to improve. Beginners just can't keep up with people trying to play a song in the others are yeah. And I did actually. I I visited um, and there may be somebody here from that group. Um, but I did visit. Uh, I'm touching my face, so take a take a sip. That's one of the rules. I did visit a guitar circle uh, that was being done at a church in Burbank, um, and it was probably ooh, I'd say 15 
guy. It was all guys, probably age everything from age 15 to age 75. Um, and there were probably three guys that were pretty good. Um, and I definitely didn't play very good. You know, we took turns soloing and everything. I, I definitely didn't play very good because I just it wasn't, I don't know. It just, but, but also it was, it was, that was too much. And it was all guitar players. So that kind of thing, I'd almost be better to break up into pairs or groups of three and, and jam. I think that would be all, make more sense. But, uh, but it was a way for fellowshipping and talking, talking and, and having coffee and all that stuff. So I get that. And I think that's a good idea. Especially when this is all over, you're really going to crave that stuff. Um, dang, I hit the erase button. Anyway, recitals scare me into quitting the cello. And I hate, hated the accordion. My parents made me take lessons on it. Bo Boba Cat or Boba Cat. Boba Cat. Bob, sorry. Back of Cat. Um, yeah, and yeah, gear. Uh, so... Um, yeah, I, I totally, yeah, it's the same thing with me. I mean, I wasn't, I kept taking, le I kept playing and kept taking lessons, but I wasn't a fan of the recital. It was so, man, that, that feeling, it's like, it's like when you don't want to be on a roller coaster and you just got on and you're going up that hill, it's that feeling. It's like, and it lasts all week. So it's like a week long climb. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I hated it. So, um, yeah, I wore the shirt yesterday. I'm, I'm a slob. <laughs> Watch me wear it tomorrow. No, I won't wear it tomorrow. I'm going to change it in a minute when we're done here. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Just, yeah, so <clears throat> Bob and, and Gear are both trying to get to the point where they can solo and everything. And like I said, what I'm talking about here the, the, with the soloing and about making sure it's a conversation and not just uh, if someone said a uh, filibuster. Don't filibuster. Don't read the phone book. Don't just go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. You're not saying anything. What is it they say? A, a room full of monkeys can type a, the world's greatest novel eventually. <laughs> uh, you know, it's it's you really you really want to try to say something, even if it's very very simple. It's far more you know. And a, and keep in mind, I'm coming from a place where when I first started getting into soloing and getting into the guitar on a serious level, I wanted to be the fastest guitar player in the world. I was trying to be, you know. Al Miola and Alan Holdsworth and uh, all these amazing shredders. I really wanted to try to do that. And a couple things happened. Nobody really wants to listen to it. And consequently, nobody wants to pay you to play it. <laughs> so it was really hard to kind of get, you know, unless you're the artist and you got a bunch of guitar players in the, in the, in the, in the arena to watch you. And, you, you know, you don't see a lot of shredders filling up arenas. So, um, so I, I, you know, I, you know, Eddie Van Halen maybe, but even he was more style over, uh, you know, over he he had a style that was just amazing, and the songs were great. So it was a band thing. So it seemed to work there, um, and I, I don't know that I would call necessarily Eddie a shredder. Maybe he maybe he was the ultimate shredder. I don't know. Um, yeah, bar chords are very difficult for you, Ben. Yeah, that's that's not that's not unlike almost everybody here. Uh, sorry, Peter, most of the audience is saying themselves. I wish I had the courage to do that. Uh, AJ, wait. Uh, yeah, I don't think Kathy. I don't think you have to do the recital. But but uh, who was made the great point? Um, you know, they want you to succeed, too. So I think that that's, that was Kimberly, I think. That's totally right. They don't want you to fail. They want you to succeed. In fact, but it, it, <laughs> going, to, going to recitals, and I, I've been to, like, recitals. I got asked to, to go to recitals at USC for the classical guitar department. Deb, haven't seen you in a while. Um, yes, and you... Uh, Deb makes the point. She said, I play the straight up pentatonic over and over again, different positions just to get the mechanics out of the way. hundred percent. No, you have to do that. Um, uh, but um, I, I do, I don't, you know, I, I had you play that scale um, right here. Uh, let's see right there. I had you play that scale up and down and you should do it, go ahead and do that. You want to have your fingers know where every note is so that you can easily go there. But ultimately that playing the scale up and down is not soloing. You can't call that soloing. Um, how do you think when soloing? Do you switch between scales, mostly thinking scale shapes? Are you thinking more about the notes in the chord that's being played? Chris is asking. Uh, none of those. 
Um, really what I'm trying to do is um, the, cause I can, you can make any note work. So you don't have to scale, um, scale, scales will just kind of keep you in a, in a narrow path. Um, and we could do overlays of scales. Like I could combine this scale with a E, uh, the blue scale and add a note to that and then combine that with the E the mixolydian scale. Ultimately you, you get almost to the point where you've got all 12 notes represented if you keep adding scales on top of itself. So um, I really think just melodically, um, I've said this before and I probably haven't said it in a while, but one thing you could do that's a really great exercise is when you're doing this, is to try to sing along with it, okay? So it's like, um, you can sing along with it by yourself, alone, and no one's listening to you. So you, I know that no one's going to hear that. <laughs> um, um, and so uh, the, uh, but what the goal is, at first when you do that, when you first start singing, you're going like this. You're singing after you're playing, okay? Eventually you get to the point where you're singing. But then eventually you go in your head and you go. Okay, you start to hear melodies in your head and start to transfer them to the guitar. So that's, more what I think of than scales or chord shapes. I have talked about, I do use, with chord shapes, I will often think, um, uh, I do the cage method. So like if I'm playing over E chord, I might see the E chord here and then this E chord here and this E chord here and this E chord there, you know. And each of those shapes has blues licks all over them. Uh, like if, I, if I'm visualizing this, this E shape, or this D shape E chord, um, uh, 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 sorry, uh, Steve Ray Vaughn did that one a lot. He loved that lick, right? So is he thinking the, this shape? Is he thinking a minor pentatonic? Or is he just hearing that in his head and playing it? He's doing the latter thing, I'm sure of it. He's not, you know, you might discover that lick by using the cage method. But in the moment, we're talking about in the moment here when I'm soloing, you said when, when you're soloing, um, when I'm practicing might be a different thing. When I'm soloing, then I'm more trying to trying to hear things in my head and put them on the guitar. Um, I'm trying to say something musically. I'm trying to create a new melody to the song. Okay, if that makes sense. I went. I, I'm getting way behind on these comments, but let me see. Um, yes, we have no no Um But yeah, singing along with your playing. First, you're going to be echoing with your voice, your hands. Then you're going to get them together. And then the goal is to ultimately echo with your hands what you're hearing in your head. And here's why. Here's, here's what my, my, this is my, purely my speculation. David's not here. Normally, David's here and he would be my kind of go-to <laughs> mental guy, brain guy. Um, but I think you, you can, you, from the moment you're born, you're hearing melodies. And I think your brain pretty much records everything you've ever heard. I mean, I, so how often do you hear a melody? You go, wow, that sounds familiar. Or you hear a song and you go, I, I know this song from somewhere. And you may have only heard it once, but now you're hearing it a second time and you're recognizing it. And so I think, I think my point is that you've got millions and millions of melodies in your head. So if you can find a way to move that information from your head to your hands, um, and that's why you do exercises. So you have the facility to play anything you hear in your head. You have the ability to play in your hands. And that's kind of a jazz, uh, that's kind of a school of jazz thought. Uh, jazzers do that a lot. They, they really try to play every combination of everything they can possibly do so that if they hear it, they can play it, if that makes sense. Uh, so it doesn't mean you don't put the work in and know the scales, but ultimately when you're soloing, which is what you asked, I'm not thinking scales as much as I'm trying to say something worth saying. Fear is false every evidence appearing real. Yeah. <laughs> we get a lot of wisdom on these chats here, you guys. You guys are pretty amazing. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, boom, boom, boom. 
Yeah, it's just, it's, it, it, you know, here's the thing. You should be playing guitar for joy. I mean, it's my job. Um, and there are sometimes it does feel like a job. Definitely. And uh, you're probably like, how can that be? You get to play guitar. It's like NBA players. You're playing basketball. <laughs> how is it a job? But at some point, there's points where it's a job. It may be a job when, well, I'll tell you when it's a job when you're schlepping gear into your car and you show up at the session and it's up four flights of stairs or whatever. You know, then it's a job. <laughs> um, but, but you know, if you're doing this, if this is a hobby, if it's not fun, you're, you're not going to, I can't see a reason to, to sit down and practice for something that you just are petrified about doing. Um, yeah, uh, Stairway to Heaven's practically all A minor pentatonical. He loads, he, uh, Bob uh, Schumann, but he does land on that F note a couple times, right? So he kind of jumps out of the key to accommodate the F chord, which he, he really didn't need to, but it makes it sound like he knows where he's at in the song. George Benson is great. I love George Benson. Um, and, and George Benson can't read a note of music. Neither could Wes Montgomery. And they, they were great soloists. So they weren't really... Um, and I, Sheila Gonzalez, the sax player at my church, who tours with Dweezil Zappa and also with uh, Colin Hay from uh, Men at Work, um, she is one of the best soloists I know. And I, and I will ask her after... after you know, I, I ask her the same stupid... Not stupid question, sorry. I ask her the same question, like, what... What key were you? What scale were you using then? She goes, I don't know. <laughs> she has no idea, and she plays with Dweezil Zappa playing Frank Zappa tunes. I mean, after she got the gig, she had to memorize seventy Zappa tunes on keys and sax, <laughs> and she sings and plays percussion too. She's the most amazing musician I know. I've seen her at a church. She'll sometimes do it too, play keys and sax at the same time, and harmonize with herself. It's like on the fly. <laughs> I'm like, what? You are an insane human being. Uh, let's see. Um, her husband's a great guitar player, too. Um, so, yeah, Chris, hopefully that helps. Uh, ben, okay, you're asking each other questions. All right. Back, uh, back a cat. I play by ear easier. That actually makes it harder to read in my music lessons. Yeah. Yeah, my, you know, my son was that way. My son, I was trying to teach him music, and he would memorize it long before he could read it. You know, and that's okay. That's just your skill set, and and I'm 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 jealous of people like that because my ear is actually pretty crappy when it comes down to it. I I, uh, you know, I'm better now. I think now that I'm writing music for TV and things like that, I'm like, oh, I need a, a sharp nine chord here or whatever. I you know I know what I'm needing more. So when I hear it, I'm like, oh, that's a sharp nine chord. But I used to, and there is um, some great websites where you can go and do uh, ear training. I should do I should do. Um, uh, I should do a page of that or something where you can I can send you to that. Um, anyway, um, let's see. Oh wait a minute, AJ. Uh, but Tom hasn't seen it. Yes. What? I'm sorry. What happened? I seen Kathy. I, AJ, I saw your comment about the Guitar Center thing. Uh, Uh, let's see. <laughs> it's all right, AJ. Don't worry about it. Okay. And I'm getting ready to sign off. Um, let's see. What else? Ear to fingertips. Yep. More organic, 100%. But it doesn't mean you don't do learn all the scales anyway to get the facility and have the knowledge. But you're, you're, you, you have a, a lot more... Uh, um, I, I think I think in some ways if you can go head to head to ear or ear to hand, um, you know it starts out like I said when you start singing along with yourself it's you're singing your what you're playing and yeah George Benson oh that's why you mentioned George Benson yeah a lot of musicians do that though they just don't have a mic on George Benson was one of the ones that that would first guys that would actually put a mic up I think Keith Jarrett does it too he's singing along or at least moaning along with his playing. Um, I mean, yeah, I used to love, I actually did a session one time where I actually sang along with my solo for a record. I, I hope it never came out, but. <laughs> okay, so Deb, you played bass, you you gave up playing bass four nights a week at age 25 because it became a job. Yep. I No, I, I totally get that. It, and it's if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. You know, if it's, you want to just do it for fun and a hobby, I totally get that. Uh, what Nothing will discourage you more um, 
in, in, is nothing will discourage you more in a profession than failure or lack of success. And so by success, you know, people think in my business, success has to be uh, you're famous and everybody knows your name and you sell millions of records and you fill out arenas. Um, and that's not that's not success really in my business. My wife always reminds me success is paying the mortgage playing guitar. That's that's pretty darn successful because <laughs> it's pretty darn rare. So, um, and that reminded me of another joke. So in lieu of a, um, in lieu of a, of a story, Diane, I may tell a joke. Is that okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, let's see. Ben, uh, Ben is one newbie to another. Stick with it. It gets easier. You break. Yes. 100%. Just stick with it. Just have fun. I mean, that's that's why I'm here with you guys. I'm, I'm This is fun for me. So I like, you know, I like teaching. I don't think I would want to be a teacher. Not the brown pants joke. No. You, see, don't give away the <laughs> punchline. <laughs> that's a great joke, though, wasn't it? That's a great joke for kids. Uh, is this joke for kids? Let me think. Uh, I have several that are not. Uh, well, now I have to remember what joke I was going to tell. It was it was uh, it was something to do with one one of the things we were talking about. Now I can't remember what which joke. Uh, dang it! Uh, what was it? And I had a story in mind too, but I can't remember that either. My dad was great at telling jokes. He could remember jokes forever. He would. He just had a. He was a, like a. He was, well, again, I started doing YouTube largely because my, when my father passed, um, there's a saying, when a, when a person dies, a library burns to the ground. And it was so true. And my dad had, I mean, not only like a thousand jokes memorized, um, uh, but um, uh, he knew every, you know, he had, he was a baseball encyclopedia. He knew everything about jazz. And he knew so much family history, and he dies, and that just goes away. It's just like, dang it. So I decided to start doing lessons because I wanted to be able to get my all the stuff that I've kind of worked out in my head. I wanted to get it up on YouTube so future generations can benefit from it. I didn't know I was actually ever going to make any money from it, and I do. Um, so it's kind of nice. <laughs> Well, yeah, back of cat. Yeah, I definitely like having. I like being behind the scenes. I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade places with Justin Bieber or anyone like him for all the, you know, for all the money in the world. Although that would get me all the money in the world. Um, okay, so I, I remember my joke. I remember my joke, and you could probably do this with any profession. And I'm gonna file my nail right now while I talk. Um, but so there's a trombone player, and trombone players are often besmirched. In the music business, <laughs> you know, they're kind of like, well, there was a, what was the joke? Uh, uh, how do you know, was it, now I can't remember. You're at a band rehearsal and there's a knock at the door and the pizza's delivered or the trombone player delivers it. I don't know, I can't remember that one. Anyway, so trombone player's walking on the beach. Oh, I can get rid of this. Sorry. Boom. Ah, see, look, I got scene changes. Um, <laughs> great TV, yeah. <laughs> this is how bored you guys are. Watching time. Well, they do have that kind of those people that, that like literally will let you watch eight hours of their life in their house. That's so weird. But that's kind of what's happening. You're watching two hours of my life. Um, so this trombone player is walking on the beach and he sees a bottle on the beach and he goes, he looks at it and he goes, what? A bottle? No way. And he rubs it and a genie pops out. And the genie says, I'll grant you three wishes. And he's, the, the trombone player says, okay, for my first wish, I want to be the busiest trombone player in the world. Like the busiest tr session trombone player in the world. And this is in L.A. He's walking the beach in L.A. He gets home, and on his answering machine, this is an old joke, on his answering machine, there's like 25 messages. He's got bookings for the next six weeks of sessions. Like he's doing three a days for six days a week. It's insane. It's what he's always dreamed of. That's why he moved to Los Angeles. <laughs> why I moved to Los Angeles. And so he, he, he's doing this. And, and, you know, six weeks and eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks. Eh, he's getting a little bored. Okay, this is great. But, 
he wants to take it up a notch. So he rubs the genie lap again. The genie pops out and he goes, what, what would you like your second wish to be? And he goes, I want to be the Kenny G of trombone. And the genie goes, poof. And the next thing you know, the guy's like recording an album. It's number one on the charts. He's got concerts booked all over the world. He's playing at the Parthenon. He's playing at Carnegie Hall. He's playing at the Hollywood Bowl. He's playing at all the major arenas. And he's just packed audiences everywhere. He is just, just on fire professionally. He's just like, but you know, about six, seven, eight months in, he's a little tired, a little exhausted, but he, he's, he's loving it. But he, he's like, he rubs the genie lamp again and the genie pop, poof, pops out. Okay, what would you like your third wish to be? And, and, he's, and he says, genie, I don't know. I said, I, I, I just want to go whatever the next level is. I want to go to that next level. And then the next day he wakes up and he is a bad sax player. <laughs> Number one on the trombone charts. <laughs> so he wakes up and he's a bad sax player. That's that's what we that's what musicians think of trombone players. <laughs> you can do it with guitar, you know, he's like the next level, he wakes up and he's a bad drummer or something, you know, or bass player. <laughs> I want to be the greatest bass player in the world. And, and then the next thing, I probably should have, the way I should have told the joke is though, the next day he wakes up and he's got all these sessions. The next day he wakes up and he's like, but yeah. Yeah, and you can insert any profession, you know, like the civil, he wakes up and he's a bad civil engineer or something like that. <laughs> so anyway, on that note, I, uh, Diane's laughing. So that tells me that's good enough for story time. That qualifies as a story. I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, and I am going to sign off. I'm, I think I'm digging this software. I think it's working for everybody. Um, and um, what do you got? <laughs> call a guy that hangs out with musicians, a trombone player, a drummer. <laughs> uh, that was one of, uh, I think it was, was it uh, Count Basie? He said in his band he had 16 musicians and a drummer. Is that right? The only instrument, all the notes are in seven positions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bagpipes. You know, it's funny that the three most despised instruments, uh, you know, and I don't know, I, 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 I get trouble for saying, adding sitar in there. But sitar is probably the least despised of these, but banjo and bagpipes are always despised. It's all three of them have drones. So the banjo has the drone G-string, which you're constantly hitting because it's right here on the thumb. And then bagpipes have drone pipes that you're playing to while well, you're playing the, the melody pipe. And then sitars also have drone strings. So people kind of get tired of hearing all those things. So I think that's why they're not. But um, yeah, everybody stay safe. I'm going to be back tomorrow, Lord willing. And um, uh, we are going to do the blues scale tomorrow. So... Um, I will try to I will try to do a MP3 bounce of that jam track, but I'm gonna have to run it for you know a lot longer than one time through. Okay, so I'm gonna have to like I'll um, I'll loop the crud out of it and then bounce it and maybe upload it to the Discord, which by the way is right here. I haven't put a link to the Discord yet, so I'm gonna invite you to the Discord if you're not. And that's this is where the conversation continues. With everybody here, generally not me, but everybody's really helpful and fun, and you guys are having a blast, and you've made a lot of new friends through this whole thing, which is way to go. I mean, may I say, just way to make lemonade out of lemons, okay, you guys? Um, way to do that. And so we've got a really, yeah, bagpipes has nine notes no matter what. Yep, yep. And Kodo also is another one of those ones. Although I like the Kodo, but it also, I think, has some drone strings, so that things tend to be all in the same key. Also, um, there's a couple other instruments like that. We'll see with it when I get my Bode Psaltery if it's really annoying. Um, no, I'm not going to take a nap. i got to take a call, actually, and I've got to work on this session, and then I have to, <laughs> have to lay out in the sun for 15 minutes. I, I, I promised my wife I'd get some vitamin D. So, and I'll take some vitamin D, too. So I know someone was saying you got to do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, we won't, won't ever forget me. You won't ever forget me. <laughs> that means a lot. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you. Uh, I will see you tomorrow. Uh, like I said, Lord willing, and we'll we'll take it. We'll take up it a notch. And then and then the next day, I'm actually looking forward to that because I feel like tomorrow I'm not looking forward to it at all. <laughs> but the next day, I'm looking forward to because I feel like the, the, there's gonna be a, a new thing we're gonna do that 
uh, I think will will be fun. It'll be an exercise. It'll feel like an exercise, but it'll give you some parameters to work with when you're playing in the blues. Okay. Um, I'm tempted. We, we may move this up into other keys so that we can play the pentatonic using all you know all your fingers and no open strings. But right now we're having fun with the open strings. It keeps it real simple. Okay. All right. Yes, and change my shirt. I'll do that now. I'm so sorry. It's gross. At least this isn't smell-o-vision. All right. On that note, take care. I'll see you tomorrow.